episode 17. Willie Fogg has 21 days left to successfully travel around the world in 80 days. Meanwhile, at Scotland Yard headquarters in London... Enough! I have been patient up till now, Commissioner, but I must insist that you arrest Willie Fogg immediately. Mr. Sullivan, I have been that trying... That robbed the Bank of England 59 days ago, and yet you allow him to gallivant around the world as a free man. Naturally, we have Scotland Yard to doing everything we can. But at present, he's on the high seas, and there's nothing we can do. Of course there is, if you'd only mm -hmm. use your head. Why not simply cable the police in San Francisco, ordering them to arrest Willie Fogg? There's your answer, Commissioner. We can't give orders to the Americans. As a former colony, they're quite sensitive about their independence, you know. Try to see it from the diplomatic point of view. Perhaps you'd prefer to be employed as a diplomat, Commissioner oh, Rowan. Uh, Mr. Sullivan. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Mr. Sullivan, I like this job. Oh. <laughs> Willie Fogg is indeed upon the high seas. He and his friends are on board the General Grant, at present in the main cabin, enjoying the prospect of a good meal. Well, my friends, I'm delighted to announce that tomorrow we shall be arriving in America. And two days ahead of the schedule, n'est-ce pas? Mm -hmm. Two days? Ah. Yeah, the sooner we get there, the better. Ah. I'm tired of being a seasick. <laughs> Aren't you? You're probably sick from eating too much food, Tico. Hey, come on! Very funny, very funny. But that's what does that stop you? What do I have? Have some more. Yeah, hey, good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Fogg, since you're ahead of schedule, you'll be able to complete your journey within the 80-day time limit. And I couldn't have done it without the efforts of our brave captain, to you, sir. Well done. Uh, no need to mention it, Mr. Fogg. It's a pleasure to help you any way I can, believe me. I'm deeply grateful, <laughs> Captain. To your journey, Mr. Fogg. To its successful outcome. And winning your wager. And all that. Hip, hip, hip. hip. hooray! Cheers, Tico. Bottoms up. Mm -hmm. ah! oh, sorry, Tico. Excuse me. <clears throat> you just went through a giant storm without blinking an eye. And one little sip of champagne and you sunk, Captain? I gotta admit it, Tico. You're right there. Champagne does that to me. There's no doubt about it. I'm much better off in a typhoon. I'm glad you and your friends are laughing, Mr. Fogg. You won't be laughing much longer. I promise you. And so the General Brown sails on beneath starry skies, while the evil transfer disguised as a waiter prepares to carry out his latest nefarious scheme. Let's see if we can shed a bit of light on the situation. <laughs> Little does Transfer realize that Inspector Dixon, Constable Bully of Scotland Guard, are on the sea. Watchful and alert as usual. The mast is on fire! 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 The, the ship is burning! Ah. Look at me! Get you, Willie Fogg, and now I've finally done it. <laughs> Transfers as good as his word. Oh, what a nice cozy fire. Get up, Bonnie! Get up! Help! 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 Get up! Can't you see what I am? Oh, I was having the nicest drink. I was back home in front of the fire. You nincompoop! Poopy, open your eyes! The blasted boat is burning! Huh? Oh, I do see what you mean, Inspector. Steady, Bonnie! Steady! Huh? Oh, Inspector, I'm on fire! Oh, what we do, Inspector? Go below and give the alarm. We've got to warn everyone. Wait for me. Uh, empty. Wait here. 
Yes, Captain. Now, may I be of service to you, sir? Look, we seem to have run out of champagne. Would you get us another bottle, please? Thanks. Of course, Captain. I believe we have a few bottles left. I'll bring you the finest we've got. Fine. It's time for another toast, Mr. Farr. Mm. No more for me, Captain. I've had too much already. Uh, come on. Oh, 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 oh. What in places is going on here? give to your lord. Uh, sir, sir. Uh, what are you trying to say? Sir, the alarm. I mean, sound the alert. Oh, the ship is on fire. We're ablaze, Captain. <laughs> Start passing those water buckets, and you two look after the passengers. Huh? Right. You can count on us, sir. Bring it on. We oui, miss you, Fog. I know what I have to do. Hurry up with those buckets, men. We need all the water we can get. Come on, hurry it up. I need more water. Hurry. Hey, hold your horses. I've only got two hands, you know. <laughs> Bring it up. Throw down the line. We must get a bucket tied to that line, sailor. We'll douse the mast. <laughs> that boy has quite an arm on him. Captain, we can use the same technique on the other mast. You heard the man. Get moving on the double. Right away, Captain. It shouldn't be long now before we have it under control, I think. <laughs> Through the night, the men battle to save the ship, unaware that the arsonist himself <laughs> lurks among them. And for those crew members who were injured in the line of battle, there are the gentle, ministering hands of Princess Rose. It might be sore for a few days, but you'll be fine. But it is a sad-looking ship indeed that greets the dawn. <gasps> are you saying that we're not oh. going to San Francisco? Oh. Mr. Fogg, our sails are burnt and we're practically out of coal. I'm very sorry. So am I, Captain. Uh, huh? Who's innocent, I tell you? We were slacking on the deep. I mean, sleeping on the deck. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Accusing each other won't do us any good. We've got a chance, although it's a slim one. You see, we're in a strong easterly current right now. We'll probably drift all the way to Mexico. <gasps> Did you say Mexico? <gasps> Should get there within a day or two. Hmm. <sighs> and so Willie Fogg and his traveling companions find themselves in the small Mexican port of Ensenada. They have not only lost their two-day advantage, but the ship will take at least a week to repair. Mm. Hey! Mm. Mm. Monsieur Fogg, tell me, how do you plan to complete mm. the trip? Hmm. Well, Rigadon, with the ship out of commission, we'll have to devise another means of reaching our destination. Hmm. When the ship is repaired, we'll make up for the lost time, won't we, Mr. Fogg? It's too badly damaged, I'm afraid. Oh, oh no! Oh. Uh. Hey, what's this funny-looking tree here? Oh. Oh. <laughs> All right, you asked for it. At the chamber the you ain't gonna believe it, this, but be careful of those trees, Rigadon. They fight back. I pull your needles out. One at a time. You want to fight to come and get me? Yeah. Well, now I think we should be able to get a spot of lunch here. Oh, well, yeah, I hope so. <laughs> Pardon me, are you the si, proprietor of this establishment? Si, senor, I am. Hey, Chico? are you the cook too? Me and my friends here are starving. Hmm, do you hmm. think we might purchase some food? Si, senor. Follow me, please. Hey, leave alone. Smell like food. Well, let's have a look. <clears throat> San Francisco is approximately 470 miles due north. It's a long ways from here. Oh, monsieur, what will we do? <laughs> huh? Uh, monsieur Fogg, we could hire a horse and wagon, hmm? No, uh, much too slow. Oh, we. Oui. Your dinner, senor. Tacos and chili for the small one. Be careful, it's spicy. Yeah. Almost like a mama's a meat sauce. <laughs> Excuse me, could my friend have some water? Si, senor. My chica, what on earth is the matter? It's hot. <laughs> I only wish you could have seen the look on your face. <laughs> oh, the 
drinks too, Rigador. Rigador's been poisoned! Oh. <laughs> You're drinking tequila. Though it has a mild flavor, its alcoholic content is quite high. Now pay attention. Mm -hmm. oh, so that is it. Now I see, monsieur. That is exactly what my stomach felt like after I was swallowing it. <laughs> <laughs> Some air. Mm. Oh. Them if we could fly like them, we'd be in San Francisco already. Wait for me, compadres. Wait for me. I'm coming. Excuse me, but what is all this shouting about? If like most of senor. Mm -hmm. Well, I suggest we see for ourselves. Whatever that thing is, mis amigos, it doesn't look like a monster to me. Actually, it's a balloon. I say it means bad luck, Holy huh? Billy. You say everything means bad luck. In fact, it's a flying machine. I'm afraid that it's going to land in the water. Bring it up. Come. Hey. The balloonist may need our help. Oui, monsieur. Oui, senor. I'll go too. <laughs> Where do you think it comes from, monsieur? We'll soon find out, Rigodon. Your leg will be better in no time, sir. Gracias, senorita. You are so very kind. You've had quite a narrow escape, senor. There. I don't think it's too bad. Please, forgive me. Sorry. I'm forgetting my manners. I am Manolo Perez from Madrid. <laughs> hey, I've been to Madrid one time. Huh? Well, perhaps you can visit us again. Tell me, how do you come to be ballooning in this area, hmm? You see, senor, I was en route to San Francisco. Hmm? I was attempting to set a new speed record. San Francisco? Huh? Ah. Do you mean you could get to San Francisco in that balloon? But of course, senor, with a good wind. Unfortunately, I ran out of fuel, and that was the end of my journey. Aww. Manolo, please don't take offense, but you're my last hope. Would you consider selling me the balloon? Sell it to you? But, senor, it is impossible to fly. It is all torn up. That's no problem at all. We'll fix it. Mm -hmm. But, senor, you don't understand. It can't be fixed without the right kind of cloth. Uh, I'm sorry. You're in luck. Mr. Fogg, mm -hmm. he's talking about sailcloth. We got a lot of that around. Hmm, delightful. Did he say fog? Willie Fogg? Are you the one who's trying to go around the world in 80 days? The same. A pleasure, sir. Senor, the pleasure is mine. The balloon is yours, senor. And I... Oh! Oh. oh, I forgot about my leg. I can't thank you enough. Oh. So. De nada, senor Fogg. Curses. So Fogg is going to travel to San Francisco in a balloon, is he? Uh, well, two can play at that game, Mr. Fogg. Princess, it is moon. Uh, she's a full of horns. Is one, is two, is another one. Uh, she's not a so good a balloon, but she's good at strain the spaghetti. Come on, basket. All together, push. Hey, you two weaklings, can't you push any harder, huh? Inspector, I don't get it. How come we're helping him? Well, it's part of my new plan. I'll pretend to be French. <laughs> <laughs> Senor Fogg, one very important thing to remember if you want a speedy flight is choosing the proper air cargo. Oh, yes, with a good breeze, you can cut hours off your trip. Hmm. Well, then, do you suppose, assuming we were to get favorable winds, that it would be possible for us to reach San Francisco in 21 hours or less? Of course it's possible, senor, with the proper tailwinds, but you must exercise caution, for you could be suddenly swept aloft by unexpected updraft. 
Once I was carried to an altitude of over 30,000 feet, senor, and you can believe me when I tell you I nearly froze my equipment. Mm -hmm. I'll take care. Oh, one more thing, senor. This rope attached to the basket serves two purposes, you see. It is both an anchor to stop the balloon and a tether to tie it down. Yes, I see. That's perfectly clear. But supposing I should want to go up? Then you use that. Huh? When the flame is burning, it heats the air inside the balloon. And when the air is hot, the balloon goes up. Yes, warm air rises. My problem was I ran out of alcohol. We'll purchase some immediately. Bring it on? Yes, sir. Buenos nachos, monsieur, senor. I wish to purchase all of the strongest tequila you have. A macho hombre. Balloon, eh? Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> hot air balloon, eh? Well, Mr. Fogg, you're dealing with a master of hot air. It seems that the cunning transfer has some ballooning plans of his own. Meanwhile, aboard the General Brandt, the princess mends the damaged balloon, and Tico double-checks her handiwork. Rigodon is returning with the tequila they will use for fuel. And the fumes given off by the potent potation have gone to his head. Hmm? Whoa. Are you all right? Bonjour, monsieur. I am drunk. <laughs> but I still don't understand, sir. <clears throat> How can we pretend to want to be friends after you told Rigodon who we are? <sighs> Mr. Brigadoon didn't believe me, so we'll play along with him. Yes, now that the starch is dry, the air will have no possible way to escape. Uh, and with this, I won't have to worry about tailwinds. Quiet! Quiet! Come to think of it, I'll make a donkey out of Woody Fogg. <laughs> well, everything seems to be in order. Captain, I trust your men are getting the furnaces good and hot. Yes, sir. She'll be full before you know it. Gotta get it good and hot for lots of steam for that balloon. Any minute now, Mr. Fogg. Right you are, Captain. That's the end of the call. Yeah, she's taking a big breath now, eh? Mm-hmm. Hey, bring it on. She got the big round like my Aunt Juliana. And it's a pretty big Tico. All right, lad. Don't let those lines get tangled. Keep her away from the mast now. That's it. She's beautiful, Mr. Fogg. All right, she's going up. She's free. We owe many thanks to you, Manolo. And you, Captain. Don't mention it, Mr. Fogg. Hey, I just hope you make it back to London in time. Vaya con Dios, Senor Fogg. All right, lads, cut her free. Mr. Fogg, terribly sorry to be a bother, but my partner and I have urgent business in San Francisco, and I assumed you wouldn't mind giving us a lift, so to speak. Hey, Mr. Fogg, maybe they make us too heavy to get over the mountains. Maybe you think we should cut them loose? We'll manage somehow. Rig it on, turn huh? off the fire. Oui, monsieur. <clears throat> Go in. Can I borrow your hanky, Inspector? <clears throat> Thanks. Heights give me nosebleed. Ah, it's working perfectly. <laughs> My ingenuity is unbelievable. Sometimes I even amaze myself. Hey! Scat! Scat! Get away! Get away! Do you hear? Get away! Don't do that! Don't stop that! Do you hear me? Now look what you've done! <laughs> She says eight o'clock on the dot. Mm -hmm. At this rate, my friends, we might very well be in San Francisco by tomorrow. Do you think we can still get back to London in time to win the wager, monsieur? I believe we can. Mon dieu! Mm -hmm. 
I forgot about our excess baggage. I hope they don't slow us down. Oh, Inspector. Yes, what now? You know how I get seasick on a ship? Well, I just found out I get airsick in a balloon. Oh, plastic bully. I would have preferred if you had mentioned this before. It never came up before. What oh, 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 oh. This place isn't over yet, buddy. I'll stop you from going around the world in 80 days. I promise you that. Thanks and well done. Uh, Bully, hold this on your head. You're too good to me, Inspector. We'll need more altitude mm. to get over these mountains. Yes, sir. Hmm. Up we go, Monsieur. Inspector, now my head is cold. Oh, Bully, here, yeah, borrow my cap, but for heaven's sake, be careful of it. Thank you for your book. Mon Dieu! It's freezing up here. I should have packed my long johns. I remember Manolo warning me about this. Let's descend as quickly as we can. Très bien. We just release some of the hot air, and voila! Down we go again. Inspector, this is worse than a ship. Plastic barfie, don't pull in the basket. I mean, don't break in the basket. No, you should have it soon. You don't do it for your man. Almost by his plumber. I think we're finally on our way. And from here, Monsieur San Francisco is merely a hop, skip, and a jump away. Yes, Rigonot, so to speak. I'm sorry about your cap, Inspector. We are not speaking at present, Mario. I'm sure we can get it cleaned in San Francisco. I said, don't I talk am to sorry, me. Sorry, sir. Not into the wind. Turn around for it. Not into the wind. We next join Mr. Fogg and his companions as they arrive in the city of San Francisco, about to sample their first taste of life in the United States. They quickly discover that Western America is still a frontier, where arguments are most often settled at the point of a gun. To see how our friends will cope with this lack of civility, join us for The Showdown, the next episode in our thrilling journey around the world with Willie Fogg.